Hi, and welcome to Knit Puck. I'm Carrie, also known as Jada Knitter. Um, and as you can see, we're back in my kitchen again because I have laundry all over my living room drying and didn't think about it. So, there's no room. <laughs> so, we're here. Um, and the pug is looking at me going, Where's my treat? And yeah. Like I said, my name's Carrie, also known as Jade Knitter, and welcome to Knit Pugs. Now that I've done my ramble at the beginning, um, you can find me on Rav, uh, Twitter, and Instagram, all under Jaded Knitter. And you can find the podcast on Rav, iTunes, YouTube, and our blog, all under Knit Pug. Uh, the blog is knitpug.com. And come join the group, because we do have prizes and stuff. There will be a drawing for this. Um, and if you can hear kind of a noise in the background, that's my dishwasher. And having it running is the lesser of evils. Because if it's not running, it beeps until I turn it back on. Um, so trust me, the little noise you can hear is the lesser of evils. Um, so yeah, we will be doing the draw for this, which is a needle cozy. Um, and it is from Linear String. Thank you, Erin. Uh, but we'll be doing that after. Uh, now, I don't actually have the foe that they're all expecting because I am, well, I left it at Mom's place and I didn't realize when I left it that I hadn't actually done the ends on it. I knew I hadn't blocked it. Mom was okay with blocking it, but I hadn't done the ends on it. So, bad carry. Bad, bad carry. Um, I will be up in Ottawa later in the summer, so I'll get pictures and whatnot if it finished. Then. So you'll just have to wait to see. Um, and that's the, the shawl that I was knitting for my mom. And it is the Clio by uh, Romney Knits. It's Rosemary Hill. Um, and she's Romney on Ravelry. I love her for shawl patterns. I've knit a bunch of them before. Um, the other thing I was, I believe I had started on the last podcast was this, uh, which is the, uh, what is the name of this thing? It's the Claret Cardigan. As you can see it has a really lovely, oops, let's try not Try and stay in front of the light, because if I go behind the light, then you can't see anything. Um, but it has a really nice lace pattern down at the bottom. It's just it's uh, just your standard. Uh, I have no idea why my computer keeps beeping. It keeps telling me I have updates and stuff. It's probably what happens when you don't turn your computer on for a month. Um, so ignore that noise too. I'm just not having. It. It's not going well today. Um, so it's got the lace pattern all the way up the front, and it'll go all the way up. It is actually a raglan, so bottom up raglan, so I'm in the process of knitting sleeves. I would have two sleeves tonight if I had read the pattern. This is why you always read the pattern. Um, I don't advocate reading through the whole pattern because that'll just confuse you, because quite frankly, Half of it you won't get until you won't understand until you get there. But thoroughly read through the section that you're knitting on. Because I was looking at the sleeve pattern and I read it and completely skipped the entire paragraph somehow um, that said, you know, make one, knit to end, make one, you know, the standard sleeve increase, you know, knit so many rows, repeat. For however, so I knit an entire sleeve, but it was just it was straight. There was no increases, which was fine. It fit. It looked good. The problem was I was missing 30 stitches, which is going to cause problems for the raglan. I I can, and I'm going to have to, um, you know, eat four stitches or something in a raglan. I can do that. 30 of them's a little bit trickier. It can be done, and it can be done right, but. Quite frankly, I didn't want to have to do the math for it, so I just ripped the sleeve back and redid it. And 
at that point I got halfway through what you see here and realized that on take two I had misread the instructions again. Um, just for the size I'm doing, it's do the, the make the make a couple and then knit seven rounds and then make a couple and knit seven rounds. Well, everything, all of the smaller sizes are all do 11 rounds, so I was doing 11 rounds. So the first four or so are 11 rounds and then the next four are nine rounds and then, well I'm almost out of rounds. So. <laughs> We're not going to get a full uh, 13 repeats, but like I said, I can fub four stitches missing out of a raglan increase. I cannot, however, uh, do that for 30. I also realized when I went to check to see how long this sleeve is, it's supposed to be 19 and a quarter inches, um, that I probably own six maybe seven tape measures, just little ones, for projects like this. I can't find either of my two massive 30-foot industrial tape measures. I can't find either of my 16-foot industrial tape measures, and I cannot find any of my little tape measures, like my actual knitting and sewing tape measures. None of them. That's like what, tape? 10? 11? Gone. And one of which I've only had a week because I got it last week in a small package. And it was a really nice one too. And I can't find it. None of them. They're all gone. They're in the house somewhere. They're just not where I can find them. So I currently have my yardstick. My massive, massive it's actually technically a, it's a meter and a bit stick because it's more than a yard. Um, I have that out. This is what I use when I need to like draw straight lines and measure large things. And, yeah, it's not what I generally use for knitting, but that's okay. <laughs> that's what I'm currently using. I don't care. Um, I have recently discovered, this is one of my knitting mugs, you probably can't tell, but it's got a, a cable knit pattern on it, I have a couple of these now. Um, I stumbled accidentally on because I walked into a Starbucks. So we don't have one in town, so I'll go into one whenever I'm in Kitchener. Um, so I walked in and they had a... It was a mango lemonade. It was a mango tea lemonade. It's really good. But it's also like five bucks per drink, so yeah. So I wandered into David's Tea and I found a mango citrus uh, tea, which is meant to make iced tea. So I'm now, I'm, I'm addicted to this stuff. It's a liter of the, the mango tea and then just over a liter of lemonade. And chill. Yeah. I'm rather addicted. It's my new summer drink. And it has now no caffeine in it, which does not help at all. Cause... Yeah. So, back to the knitting content. Because I've ranted about my life of tape measures and I've told you about my teeth. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm knitting the, the Claret cardigan and this is by Megan Goodacre. And, uh, oh, the lighting has changed again. Arg. Um, there we go. You can kind of see it. So I have one sleeve done, and I've got the cardigan done up to the armholes. As you can tell, 
today is brought to you by the color green. There's more green to come. Uh, so that's what's on the needles right now. That's what I've been working on for the last couple of weeks. Um, and then some of you might remember these. These are the zigzag, zig, smoky zigzags. Um, and they're from New Directions, patterns from New Directions and Sock Knitting. Um, and the pattern itself is by Natalia um, Vesaleva. And this is Crazy Dog Yarns. Is the yarn. It's the stuff that Janet, hi Janet, uh, who's the Fiberholic makes. And I got the extra, I just bought her last skein essentially. Uh, well, not her last skein, but the skein she happened to have handy um, to finish off. So the other one's finished now. It just has, I just have to finish the seaming on it. So they're done ish. This is actually completely done because even the, even the ends are woven in. But I really do, I like how these turned out. I will never knit another pair, but I like how these turned out. They even feel good. Like they feel weird um, because they're all done, they're essentially all garter stitch, but they're neat and I like them. That is my foray into Okay, I'm, I was going to say that's my foray into weird constructed socks, but it's not the only one because I have that uh, weird different yarn with two colors that I'm going to. That's not going to work very well. Um, that I'm going to make into a pair of socks. Um, the only other thing is there is stash acquisition, but part of it's in the car because I got it while I was up in Ottawa. Um, so that will, uh, yeah, it'll come. You'll see it eventually. Uh, the other stash acquisition I got was, I was in two swaps recently, and this was from the other swap. Uh, and this is actually, this is off the, the Pug Lovers board. And this is, um, I keep wanting to say Ella Chan, but I don't think that's how you pronounce the Rav name. Um, it's Kristen, who ended up being my partner. And Kristen is actually a member of our group. And this is, plus stuff for Gadget, this is what she sent me. And this is, um, what is it? Life in the Long Grass in Dyed Yarn. And um, the colorway name is Bracken, and I really like it. It's probably going to be hard to tell because the lights, I don't know what happened to the light in here. Apparently one of mine died while I was recording. I'm not going to go back and record more. So, uh, so you guys will see this again because I really like this. I just haven't figured out what I want to make this yet. And the other thing she got me was a deep hand holder. This one is from... The gnome knitter uh, and it's gnome without the G so it's just n-o-m-e uh, and pin holder with sushi I loves me some sushi uh, and Kristen I, I can't have enough of these so I'm assuming this was what you meant when you said you got me something that I already had well I can't have enough of these so I see no problem with more. Unless you're referring to the yarn. Which I don't think you were because I mean, nothing. Okay, it's yarn. Again, you can't have too much of this. Um, <laughs> so, that is pretty much it as far as what's going on right now. Um, I'm going to say as far as the recording schedule goes, I'm probably going to go to every two weeks at least for the summer. Um, just because there isn't as much knitting getting done. So I figure it's going to be very boring for you guys and very short episodes for me to come in every week and go, yeah, I got this much done on something. Um, it'll probably be more than that, but yeah. Um, so that would put the next episode yeah, around Monday the 20th. But 
as promised, I'm going to do the draw for this lovely, lovely DPN holder because I really do love these. Um, I've actually had one on this all week while I was knitting on it um, until I couldn't find my six inch DPNs and had to use a set of eights, which was really annoying. But so we had, let me go back here, we had 48 entries uh, with one deletion minus myself. So we're just going to go 2 to 48. I'm doing it on random.org. Now I can't show it to anybody simply because I have, um, it's on my computer, which I'm not picking up to turn around. I don't own a small computer. Um, so 2 to 48. 34! Lucky number 34. So where are we going? 34 is... Uh, Digital Dina, who's from, I believe, Norway. Bergfrit, I think is how you pronounce your first name. I am not 100% sure, but if you send me your address, I will get this in the mail to you. Um, probably, well, within a couple of days of when you send me your address. I work in the same building as the post office. I have no excuse anymore. <laughs> I just don't work in that building all the time. So yes, um, Digital Dina, send me your your info, PM me with your info, and uh, I will send you this. Um, it's the only other thing is, I'm thinking of doing a uh, knit along. My brain is completely fried. Uh, doing a summer uh, knit along, and I know a bunch of the other Canadian podcasters are doing a Canadian knit along, and they're doing a specific one. I ended up not uh, getting involved just because I ended up with a whole bunch of stuff going on in my own personal life at the same time and it just wasn't going to work. So I'm going to do kind of a, a variation on the theme. Um, so the theme for the Nolong is going to be Canadiana. Uh, so it's some kind of CanCon, which yes, that is a valid term. It is actually how we, re uh, we refer to anything that's Canadian content is CanCon. So it can be a Canadian designer, it can be a Canadian yarn, it can be a pattern, that is reminiscent of Canada, so something that's in red and white, um, has maple leaves on it, whatever. Um, it is going to be, uh, needs to be at least 400 yards, single project, at least 400 yards. Um, so something that I will, the only exception to this I'm willing to do is something that takes up most of a ball of sock yarn. Like if you end up with using, you know, 380 yards of a bowl of sock yarn, we'll pretend you used 400. Um, so it needs to be at least 400 yards and you need to get at least half of it done. So for example, if you're knitting a pair of socks, you have to get one completed, um, half a sweater, half a blanket, whatever. Um, so 400 yards and you have to get half of it done to qualify have done is to qualify for prizes. Um, I haven't decided what the prizes are going to be yet and I am open to if anyone wants to throw something in there. Um, I'll open up the thread tonight. So to qualify for prizes you have to get at least half done and um, it has to be some kind of Canadiana. So red and white uh, has a maple leaf in it or some other you know a beaver. Pick your Canadian symbol. Um, yarn's from a Canadian dyer. Um, or it doesn't count if it's from uh, a Canadian store, unless it's either the dyer or the yarn itself, like the dyer or the manufacturer for the yarn is Canadian. Um, I will put that in there. And then at least 400 yards. The project needs to be a total of at least 400 yards. Um, and we'll go for, we'll go until the August long weekend. 
Uh, yeah. I will, once I figure out what prizes are going to be, at least one of them will be, uh, there'll be at least one prize of uh, pattern, like choose your own pattern. Um, there'll be probably a yarn prize. We'll see. We'll see what I come up with. So yeah, that is it. I'm going to go get this all stuck together uh, and post it. And I will talk to all of you in two weeks. So like I said, next episode will be on the 20th of June. Bye!